No more bets. Digital betting machines. They have been dubbed the crack cocaine of gambling. And they are tremendous cash cows for bookmakers, accounting for about half of the three billion pounds in annual revenues from betting shops. And it's easy to see how. So I'm at one of these machines and here I've got 115 pounds of credit in. I'm going to start betting on this. I put a pound there. I've got a stake there at 24 pounds 60. It's come out at black four and that means I've won 92 pounds on my 24 pound stake. As much as 300 pounds a minute can be staked on a roulette game. And this raises alarm about the machine's addictive potential. To a sizable number of MPs, these machines are a blight on society. We need the proper research on these machines to get to understand the issues around problem gambling and how they work, and to understand how they're operated by the companies themselves. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've made it quite clear that as a minimum we should be expecting of these machines is one, we slow down the rate of play. At the moment you could gamble £100 in 20 seconds on roulette on one of these machines. That's just completely outrageous. Some MPs accuse bookmakers of deliberately trying to lure vulnerable people, pointing to the concentration of betting shops in poor inner city areas. We have a problem in our high streets. Now this is something that the betting industry have been in denial about for too long and finally they fessed up and accept it's a problem. Newham in East London is the third most deprived borough in England. There are about 90 bookmakers in this borough, 18 of them alone in this mile long drag of the high street, many of them advertising the lure of their machines, casino and slot games. So just how addictive is gambling? It's an impossible question to answer, but it is one in which British politicians, bookmakers and academic researchers have immersed themselves. All the research to date really shows that gambling, problem gambling is relatively low uh, by international standards, less than 1% of the population. Uh, in fact, there was an English National Health Survey just before Christmas that showed it was probably about half a percent of the population. So it's relatively well managed. But I think there's a general acceptance that we, we, could, we could do with more research and the industry is committed to funding that through the Responsible Gambling Trust. In the absence of any hard evidence that these machines are linked to problem gambling, bookmakers have largely brushed aside warnings about their potential danger. Bookmakers are now up against cross-party consensus that something must be done about these machines. Plainly individuals have a right to make a choice, but at the end of the day we also fully accept our responsibility that what we want in our shops is informed, sustainable, customers who are happy to gamble at certain levels without doing any damage to themselves. Later this year, researchers report on the potential links between machines and addictive gambling. But the government wants action sooner than that. This week, bookmakers have been summoned for a meeting with the gambling minister on how they might tighten rules. I think the one thing we'd be concerned about is a blanket restriction on any one product. Uh, problem gambling generally is understood that problem gamblers play a number of different products, up to nine. And as I said earlier, our knowledge about the problem gambler is at relatively early stages. There is a need for more research. And we would be concerned at any sort of brush stroke banning of one particular product that may just lead to problems in other sectors or other products as, as the problem gamblers go to other areas. That's because bookmakers have looked to maximise their earnings from these machines, rolling out new models and convincing investors about their guaranteed long-term income. The fear in the marketplace would be that um, if, if changes are going to be made in, in terms of the regulation of machines, that the risk is to the downside as far as the, the bookies are concerned rather than the upside. It seems inevitable that there will be tighter regulation on these machines. The question is how tight? The issue of regulatory risk around machines is going to overhang these stock, stock prices for the foreseeable future. Uh, there's going to be uncertainty there probably until the autumn at a minimum and potentially as far out as the next general election in the UK. There's very little research on other forms of gambling addiction but that vacuum may start to be filled as politicians pay more attention to the business. With gambling in the spotlight the issue for the betting industry is not what happens to these money spinning machines but what may be next in the sight of regulators. Roger Blitz, Financial Times in central London.